Hello dear friends, this is Harvest of Light by Emmanuel through Chico Xavier. Here we are, another day, this is actually day 30. Yes, we've been together for a month. Yes, a month when we are studying this book. Seifa de Luz, the book Seifa de Luz by Emmanuel. So Chico Xavier is giving to us an opportunity to revisit our lives, right? Yes, we are here to study this book that promises to be a new revelation in regards to ourselves, in regards to others, in regards to life in general. Even our, we've been talking about, especially yesterday, on how we deal with God. Is God in the center of our universe? Yes. Did we practice it? Center, the center. It's not true. We are rotating around, co-piloting with God. We are co-creators daily. When people think about God as a creator, they think of that creator that came and one day, boom, made everything happen. No, God is present all the time. I know it's hard to grasp because God is not human. It's not a being per se. God is the supreme intelligence of the universe. That's what we can grasp at this time, but we can feel the presence. We can feel the connection. And Jesus Christ came to help us on earth connect consciously to the kingdom of God, where there is only happiness. When we see our future, there is only progress. There is only more goodness, more of everything that is good. The past, it's a mixture of the lack and of the things we've acquired. The future is always brighter and brighter, but we don't need to be anxious about it because the present today is sufficiently pleasant for us to aim at the next step. Only now on the earth, we're able to handle this idea that the present may be pleasant. You think about the past, it wasn't easier. No wonder this notion that we need to be mindful is all the more in the present. Because nowadays, we can rejoice a little more being here. Because there are many people who are still struggling in the daily survival, whereas others are no longer focused in the basic needs. If you remember the hierarchy, hierarchy of needs by Abraham Maslow, you will see that we're no longer, many of us are no longer focused only in our basic needs. We can already indulge in higher needs. Thus, the concept of understanding today. Understood? Not yet, Vanessa. We haven't read it. I'm giving you time to join us. You're feeling in the classroom? Yes? Me too. Shall we, friends? Welcome, friends. Today, we're going to read chapter 29. It's titled, Understanding. The whole book, this far, Emmanuel has been talking about understanding. Why is it so important? Before we read it, let's do an assessment, shall we? How much do you apply this tool in your life, understanding? It's a virtue in itself, but it can be a tool. When you see something, do we stop to ponder, to reflect, to reason, to understand or we just react do we just react so in a scale of 0 to 10 
How often do you use this tool of understanding in your daily life? Zero being like never, or 10 mean, meaning always, all the time. Right, Katia? It is a joy. It is a joy to be here. So, where do you think you are? How often do you use understanding in your daily life? Zero being never, 10 being always, all the time. Can I read it? Yes. Are you ready? Are we ready? Yes. Breathe in and out. So we are permeable to the lesson. Think of Emmanuel, a spirit who is already at the level of the team of the Christ. He belongs to the team of the Christ on earth, coming through Chico Xavier to share this lesson. Let us See how important this is. He says, understanding. He quotes from Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1. And you know, chapter 13, verse 1 is the one that people use a lot when they get married. If you speak the tongue of the angels, but you don't have love, Emmanuel is going to give us a twist of it. Though I speak the tongues of men and of the angels, and yet I have no charity, I become sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Paraphrasing the Apostle Paul, it will be permissible for us to affirm before the renewal struggles of everyday life. So now he gives us the breakdown of it all. If I speak in various languages in the world and in the language of the spiritual plane, in order to communicate with brothers and sisters on the earth, but I have no understanding of my fellow beings, I will be like a gong that sounds empty or a hammer that beats uselessly. If I cover myself with spiritual gifts and acquire faith to the point of transplanting mountains, if I do not understand the needs of others, I am nothing. And if I distribute all the goods that I possess for the benefit of companions in difficulties greater than ours, or I put myself at stake in praise of my own convictions, but I don't show understanding to the aid of those around me, I would not take advantage of anything. Understanding is tolerant. Understanding is helpful. Understanding, understanding does not envy. Understanding does not rush. Understanding is not proud of anything. It does not flinch in ambition. It does not fall in love with its own interests. Understanding does not get angry or suspect evil. Understanding supports everyone. Understand believes in the good. Understanding expects the best, and understanding suffers without complaining. Understanding does not rejoice in injustice, but understanding seeks to be helpful in spirit and truth. Of all virtues, faith, hope, and charity, Charity remains the greatest. Charity is the greatest of all. However, it is urgent to observe, observe that if without charity there is no salvation, without understanding, charity always fails 
in its aims without completing itself for anybody. There is no charity without understanding. Let's go back to the Spirit's book by Ellen Kardec. There, in the third part of the book, you know that we have a summary of the natural and spiritual laws, divine laws of the universe. In the last law described, the law of justice, love and charity, Kardec asks, what is the definition of charity? And the spirits explain. It's a threefold definition. First part, benevolence towards everyone. Bene means good. Volence means will. Good will towards everyone. Second part of it, kindness or indulgence towards people's imperfections. And third, forgiveness of offenses. When we think of charity, it's not about beneficence. It's not about giving to others things. It's about having goodwill towards people. It's about being kind to people's shortcomings, which is hard because we are barely kind to ourselves when we observe our shortcomings. And third, forgiveness of offenses. Wow, what a challenge. It's the greatest human challenge because usually we have goodwill towards those we need the most. If we need the boss, we do everything that the boss needs, wants us to do. If we have a relative that we need the most for whatever reason, we have wonderful good news, goodwill towards that person. But what about any other person? any person and every person would we give them the world because that's what goodwill is about right chris anastasia is saying also being forgiving and understanding to those who do not understand us i agree with you that's the hardest forgiveness of offenses exactly it is hard chris but it is possible and that's why we're together here in this 11 p.m. classroom. Because we are training ourselves to say, I can do it. I can forgive myself and I can forgive others. I can be kind to myself in spite of my limitations, which are temporary, as much as the others. And I have goodwill. Whenever I can, I'm open. Whenever I, I want, I'm open to help others. So let's go back here. He paraphrases Paul. And he gives us three scenarios. One, I can speak any language in the world. And why is this important, right? Why is a manual reporting to us just because of the paraphrasing to be poetic? No. But why did Paul also mention this? He mentions in that very epistle to the Corinthians, he says, if you speak any language, even this, the language of the angels, but, and Emmanuel says, even if you speak to the spirits, be a medium. Even if you speak any language in this world. Being capable of communicating is a big deal. Because it's about being human. But that's not enough. And he says, if I don't understand 
other people, I'll be empty inside. No wonder there are many people who are feeling depressed, anxious, and I'm not being rude because we know we have our moments. But usually we enclose ourselves in our little world and we forget that there is much to be done and reach out to others. If we could forget a little bit more about what we need and devote a little part of our day to the needs of others, we wouldn't feel empty. You see, he's giving us the secret. We need to boost our understanding. That's why, friends, if you're an educator or a parent, it's vital that we teach our children. The other day, we were passing by a place that was very noisy, very noisy. There was a man who was fixing the street and the drill was making so much noise. Virginia covered her ears and said, oh my gosh, this is so noisy. We stopped and said, observe the men. Can you imagine how he feels to have to work under so much noise? It's hot, it's noisy, and he cannot escape away. We can. Quickly we will be out of here. But let us wish him some goodness because that's his work. I bet when he goes home, he can't stop hearing that noise that is in his ears. And by simply, we didn't bash her, but by simply practicing some reasoning, understanding, we're boosting the child, the future understanding. If we as parents rushed out and said, yes, it's so noisy, run away, we are missing the opportunity of boosting the understanding capacity of that child. And we should do the same with our inner child. You have an inner child. I have an inner child, and sometimes our inner child just wants to run away, right? And say, oh my gosh, just get out of here. I just want to go home. I just want to sit down. I want to sleep. What's going on? And then you hold your inner child on your hand, by the hand, and say, think of the people who cannot run away and relax. They have to keep on working. Breathe in and out, my little child, inside of myself. Soon I'll take you home and everything's gonna be fine. Right? Melissa, it's a joy to have you here. She's saying, one of my favorite passages in the Bible, 1 Corinthians. Love is patient, love is kind. Thank you so much for, for putting the whole, the whole verse, the verses here. Thank you. So, so they say, the internet's not too good. Okay, you watch later. That's okay. Melissa, you're saying your inner child runs away. I agree. And that we understand. Sometimes you're tired and you're like, oh my gosh, I have so much to do. And your inner child says, I want to rest, I want to rest, I am hungry. I want to have fun and I'm still here. But then you take your inner child by the hand and you go on. And you keep going. And Emmanuel says, even if I cover myself with spiritual gifts, you may be the greatest medium of all times and acquire faith. If to the point of transplanting mountains, if I don't understand the needs of others, I am nothing. That's why Chico Xavier was an ex excellent medium. 
He was the real deal because he was first and foremost a humanitarian. He cared for people. And I know nowadays, my friends, spiritism is wonderful, but many people are becoming theoretical spiritists. They only study. They practice in small circles, but they study, 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 and we don't practice understanding. How do we practice understanding? When we go after people's needs. Staying in our little tribe in the spirit center does not suffice. We need to expand ourselves like Mother Teresa. She left the little circle of privilege and went after the needs of others. Emmanuel saying, I am nothing, even if I have all the spiritual gifts and the faith of the world. And that's how I know there are people who are mediums and they're not happy because they don't understand the needs of others. They don't practice it. And you know, to give us a boost in our prefrontal cortex, we need to use the most advanced part of our brains, which is in this area of our head, to boost it. And I say this figuratively speaking, because everything begins in the mind and boosts in the spiritual and the physical bodies. But what we mean is, these areas are capable of modulating more. You all know that we don't use enough. We don't use as much as we could the capacity of our brains. There's much yet to be boosted. How do we do it? Mind. Remember the lesson. Previous chapter, our mental state. There's always more. Melissa is saying, nobody said it will be easy, but it will certainly be worth it. Of course, it is happening, Melissa, right? Yes, we're here. And he says, if I distribute all the goods, people are like, oh, I donate, I donate, I donate. But I don't show understanding. To aid those around me, I'm not benefiting from it, says Emmanuel. Some people say, go, donate it. Oh, I donated, I gave up. Well, those people. Well, then you didn't benefit yourself from the opportunity. You're still in the neutral position. But Vanessa, didn't I do something good? But he's saying, there's more. I think it's, he's revealing to us facets we didn't know. Facets of the law of life that we didn't know. Like in the past. Like in the past. People didn't know there was gravity. People didn't know that germs existed. Once all those things were revealed, we changed the quality of our lives on earth. Tonight, Emmanuel is revealing to us since 1972. That understanding is crucial for us to fulfill a law of God, the law of charity. How compliant have we been? So that's why he's saying understanding is tolerant. Oh, my Lord. Of course, because if I don't understand, I cannot tolerate. Hmm? So a good thing is this, I remember when I moved to Baltimore, and I'm, I'm going to use myself just to show to you the lack of understanding. When I moved to Baltimore, Maryland in 1998, I was a little shocked with the city. It was so different than what I expected. And... I remember one day this instruction from the spiritual guide saying, study the history of the city. 
and I did it. I fell in love with it. I started understanding why. Why? Because that city was the second largest entrance of Africans into slavery. No wonder so many social problems nowadays. But at the same time, was the city that sealed the independence of the United States of America in 1814, in a war, in a battle. There in the city of Baltimore, the flag of the United States of America, the Star Spangled Banner, was created by Mary Pickskill and her companions. Started learning so many facets of the city that I, I fell enchanted by the city and I surrendered myself to it saying, I'm so sorry that in my ignorance, I rejected you. And then I embraced the city as my home. And to date, I'm very grateful, no longer living in Baltimore, but very grateful to my moment of regeneration the opportunity of beginning anew in this reincarnation in that very city. So sometimes we don't like our families. Sometimes we don't like the places we're living in. Sometimes we don't like the jobs where we live in. How about if we give ourselves an opportunity to understand it? Study your city, study your family, study Study the company where you're working in. Study, I don't know, so many aspects and will become more tolerant, more helpful, he says. Understanding is helpful. And then you understand how you can help. And then you don't feel envy for those who are ahead, apparently, but they worked hard. Like Michael Phelps. He became the greatest Olympian, but you bet. He worked very hard to succeed, so I can't envy him, but admire him. Understanding does not rush. We accept the gradual steps because nature is gradual. Understanding is not proud of anything. And I think when Emmanuel is saying this, he's talking about egotism. When we disregard the potential of others, thinking that we are ahead. Hello, Raza. Thank you. Rudy is here. Be the ferment of Jesus. Exactly. And he says, understanding does not have ambition and ambition here doesn't mean superior goals it means materialistic goals it does not fall in love with its own interest and let me say this huh? chico xavier was the portrait of ellen kardec's medium because in the medium's book we learn that the key to be a good connection to good spirits is to be humble and have no personal interest. And that's exactly what Emmanuel is saying here. When I understand, I know it's not about me. That's why Chico was able to give away all the copyrights of his books. To date, he is unique. And he didn't give to any foundation related to him. He gave it to others. Unbelievable. He literally understood people like Jesus. Not saying he's at the level of Jesus, but he followed the steps of Jesus. Aren't you sometimes tempted? to secure or fall in love with your own interests 
And when people have a different interest, you don't like them. Hmm? At home, you like rice and beans. And then somebody says, oh, but I would rather eat pasta. Oh, but rice and beans are much healthier. And we're proud of our things. And we fall in love with our things. And then we're not boosting our understanding. If we have understanding, we'll fall in love with God's creation. When we have understanding, we will easily fall in love with God's creation everywhere, at any time, in everyone. Because no longer there is a separation between you and people, me and you. I admire you because you're here. But I admire you because in your daily life, you're spreading the good news. And there are so many qualities that are divine in you. Why should I only admire the things that I see in myself? So let's create an exercise here. Mentor Joseph is saying in the next 24 hours, boost our understanding. Contemplate nature, but I'm asking you, human nature. When you are in the streets of life anywhere, observe the beauty of people, but not physical. We're talking, okay? We want something more above it, quote unquote. We want the spiritual, we want the psychological, the mental. Observe, and not only in children, but adults. Not only in people that look beautiful, but those who look a different type of beauty. Contemplate. You know when you keep looking at, for example, at a cashier and see the diligence in their work. Sometimes they are so young. Or when somebody is working in construction and they are focused on their work. When somebody is at a coffee shop focused on crafting the best coffee for you or for others. And we don't, we take them for granted. The bus driver, the cab driver, the Uber driver, and contemplating the human nature and seeing the beauty in it. No wonder in chapter 10 of the book Thought in Life, Emmanuel wraps up this understanding concept by saying, seek the good, feel the good, Visualize the good. Mold the good with all the resources you have at hand. Boost the understanding through observing human nature. Thank you, Melissa, for summarizing it here for everyone. That's a greater exercise. So in the next 24 hours, we're being asked to observe human nature, contemplate it, and seek the good. Feel it. Visualize it. Mold it. And he says, when there is understanding, there is charity. If there is no understanding, there is no charity. Charity fails. If we want a more charitable world, we need to boost understanding. And that can be done by doing daily exercises using our reasoning, our thinking capacity, our feeling capacity to be in people's shoes, and bless, like Sister Sheila said through Chico Xavier, bless everyone. If you're seeing somebody making coffee, whether for you or not, contemplate, visualize and say, God bless you. The other day, I saw a couple and the boy was so young and drunk. He was being rude that girl 
I immediately felt this need to go and protect her. But then Minter Joseph said, protect him as well with your loving kindness. Deep inside that boy is suffering. He had a rough childhood and now he's trying to anesthetize his pain and repeating the same pains and sorrows that he experienced in his childhood. Wow. And then immediately I said a prayer in my mind saying, God, forgive me for my lack of understanding. Please help this boy. Help this girl. Help this couple that needs to get out of this cycle or the circle of pain. They are children of God. Okay, friends, tomorrow when we come back, Emmanuel is a wonderful educator. He continues by telling us what the greatest alm is, the greatest charity. He's going to continue studying about charity and he says, In the study of charity, do not forget that the greater alm than money, that, that the, among the greatest alm money cannot accomplish. And he talks about love love he's gonna quote from john the evangelist are you ready for it yes i think we will because we'll be exercising this observation of human nature seeking the good and blessing it as sister sheila through chico xavier asks us to do for now friends a big hug to you lots of blessings and until tomorrow god willing